Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about exfoliation. Uh, the difference between a chemical exfoliator, something like a retinoid or retinoic acid or skincare acid compared to a physical exfoliator. So something like a clarisonic or an equivalent. Guys, um, let's get into it. So why do we need to exfoliate? Well, first of all, let's look at the histology behind skin. The skin itself has got a stratum corneum, which is the upper part of your skin. That consists of compact dead skin cells. And if you have too many of those uh, dead skin cells that don't shed, basically you get dull skin. So dull skin wrinkles together with dehydrated skin. By exfoliating, what we want to do is we want to remove the dead skin cells, give it the polish. Basically, it's like a polish for your skin, yeah? So we want to remove the dead layer of skin cells uh, to give increased clarity. So you've got a better light reflex, which means when the light hits your skin, you've got that glow. Uh, it also can reduce uh, fine lines, fine wrinkles, and importantly as well, pigmentation. Exfoliation can also unclog your pores. So things like um, blackheads, whiteheads, congested skin. And in, um, I guess, in moderation, it can actually reduce oil production as well. So there's many, many uh, advantages for exfoliation. Now the big debate is what do you use? Do you use something like this? Do you use a physical exfoliator? Do you use a chemical exfoliator? So today we'll talk about the pros and cons for physical exfoliation versus chemical exfoliation. And I'll give you a few uh, hints and tips um, towards the end. So guys, if you're not following me on Instagram, by all means, uh, if you're bored, it's the links up there. Um, I do a couple of uh, videos, but importantly, skincare tips uh, throughout the week. So these are little bite-sized one-minute clips uh, or a slideshow of maybe a three or four slide presentation in regards to skincare tips. So guys, let's start off with physical exfoliation. Physical exfoliation basically means um, we use a either a, a pad, right? So you can use a cloth, you can use a pad, or you can use an exfoliator to remove the skin, uh, or dead skin cells, I should say. Um, there are pros and cons for every one of them. So with something like this, look, <laughs> Clarisonic, uh, it is a brand name. It's got the most recognized, I guess, brand name when it comes to brush exfoliators. Um, but you can buy yourself something cheaper, you know, anywhere nowadays from $20 all the way up to something like $150. I've had a Clarisonic for many, many years. In fact, seven years, all I had to do was just change the brushes. So look, it's hard for me to comment in, in regards to all the brands out there, but if you can afford one, uh, certainly consider. If you can't, just get a brush, right? So that is the higher end of physical exfoliators. You can go down to your loofah pads, yeah, so your buff buff pads, and as well as your microfiber cloth. Um, so the advantage for these, are basically, is you get immediate results compared to chemical, right? So when you remove your dead skin cells, for example, you might you want to use a moisturizer and do this in the shower maybe every day, but if you have sensitive skin, maybe two or three times a week, but you get immediate results. Um, you don't have any chances of an allergic or irritant uh, condition, for example, like dermatitis. Uh, so for example, if patients have sensitive skin like rosacea or eczema or dermatitis, you might want to consider gentle physical exfoliation rather than smacking on some uh, skincare acids. And these are all reusable, yeah, because the brushes and the, and the pads, uh, what you can do is after a couple of months, uh, you change them, yeah? So they, they don't cost that much. You can change them. They should last you anywhere between three to six months, uh, depending on your use. Uh, so with the microfiber pads, they're uh, actually very cost efficient as well. So let's talk about the disadvantage. The disadvantage of physical exfoliators is that it only works on the upper surface of the skin, right? So it works from the outside in, unlike chemicals, which can go all the way down to your basement membrane, the lower part of your epidermis. So with the physical exfoliators, yes, you're only working on the, um, on the upper surface of the skin. Uh, it can also be very easy to scrub too hard. One of the advantages of this uh, is also the depth of penetration, depending on what you use and how hard you go. But that's also a um, double-edged sword, yeah, double-edged knife, because if you do it too hard, you can cause problems. The other thing is, well, you can use seeds, yeah, so things like apricot seeds. Uh, you can also use ground coffee, so all those natural um, exfoliators. 
they they can actually uh, exfoliate well, but like I said, it depends on the pressure that you put. So by putting too much pressure, you may go down too deep or may cause too much irritation. Uh, and the other thing as well, lastly, is that using uh, particles, I'm sure you guys have tried apricot scrubs or ground coffee scrubs, they can get a little messy. So those are the pros and cons of a physical exfoliation. If you have sensitive skin, uh, I do suggest that you use a physical exfoliator first. Don't try uh, chemicals, yeah, until you can actually uh, understand your, your skin's threshold. Now, when we talk about chemical exfoliation, chemicals work by increasing the turnover of your skin. So it can happen via a few ways. First of all, acids. So we can use a skincare acid, something like a glycolic acid. Uh, so alpha hydroxy acids, the glycolics, the lactics, the citric, the mandelic acids, they can all exfoliate skin chemically. Uh, you can go for the beta hydroxy acids, for example, like the salicylic acid. So there's pros and cons uh, for each. I've been through that in the, I think the last video. Uh, and then you can actually use uh, chemicals. So you can, chemicals can actually uh, increase the skin turnover. So you can chemically, you can either exfoliate the top layer of skin, which means physically removing the dead skin cells, AKA acids, or you can increase epidermal turnover, AKA retinoids or retinol. So your skin turns over uh, between 21 to 28 days, but using uh, retinoids, you can actually increase that turnover, which means the dead skin cells get pushed out. And hence that accounts for the anti-aging uh, effects of uh, retinoids, retinol, uh, and also how it actually decreases pigmentation. So let's go through um, the pros and cons of chemical exfoliation. So advantages is that it works more evenly compared to physical exfoliation because physical exfoliation, remember, is the pressure that you're using and the passes that you're using that gives you the end result. If you're using a chemical exfoliator and you're applying it to skin, that gives an even pe penetration. So there's less prone uh, to error. And ingredients that they use often have secondary uh, advantages. Yeah. So for example, if we're talking about alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid, for example, glycolic acid, we know it can remove the upper part of the skin, the stratum corneum. We can compact the um, uh, epidermis, right? So it can actually uh, decrease pigmentation, uh, but also in higher concentrations, glycolic acid can actually help stimulate collagen. So not only are you removing the upper layer, uh, but you're also decreasing your pigment, but also stimulating collagen. So you can't do that with a physical exfoliator. Well, yeah, within reason, yeah? Um, so that's why chemical exfoliators have their, um, have their advantages. So what are the disadvantages? So unlike a physical exfoliator where you can give yourself a good scrub and you can see your uh, glowing skin uh, within a couple of hours after the redness settles down or even the next day, chemical exfoliators usually take uh, several days, weeks or months to work. So in the context of uh, retinol or retinoids, it does take anywhere up to you know two to three months before you see the results. Most chemical exfoliators, you should see a result within two weeks um, because it actually uh, takes out your dead skin cells uh, and also improves your clarity. Now, it is more difficult to figure out uh, if the product is effective or not because with a physical exfoliator, you can see the difference straight away. Uh, what I suggest you do is what we always do before and afters. I guess in the context of um, exfoliation, it's Look, the before and afters aren't going to be great. I'll, I'll tell you that, yeah, because uh, we're only removing the stratum corneum. So you do need some special photography to see the light reflectance. But you can go by how your skin feels, yeah, because one of the things which I guess is important in the context of the endpoints is a subjective viewpoint on how your skin feels. So if your skin feels soft um, and it feels nicer, Certainly, chemical exfoliations uh, more than likely has done the, the job. Um, look, what are the other cons of chemical exfoliation? Basically, uh, as we alluded before, because you're using a chemical, you have a higher chance of an irritant, if not an allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis is much more rare compared to an irritant dermatitis. An irritant dermatitis basically is uh, you've exceeded your skin's threshold. 
So if you have any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, flaking, you've probably used your uh, exfoliants uh, too much or, or wrongly, yeah? Or your skin is just not suited for that concentration. So when we, when we talk about different types of um, uh, products, what can we use uh, as in what's out there? So look, you know that I actually like Neostrata, yeah? I think Neostrata makes unbelievable skin acids. Uh, that's the skin acids which I guess have the longest, uh, I guess, sale, yeah, both in the US and also in Australia. Um, the disadvantage for Neostrata is that uh, it's slightly more expensive and <laughs> time and time again, I keep going on about the ordinary or the inky list because <laughs> nowadays for, you know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, you can get yourself a skincare acid. And if you got, you know, 20, 30 bucks, you can buy yourself quite a fair few skincare acids. That can be a good thing. Yes, it saves you money. But the bad thing is that if you don't know how to use them, that's when you get run into trouble. Another thing with uh, acids, especially glycolic acid, yeah? So we're talking about uh, photosensitivity. So the photosensitivity is idiosyncratic. We don't actually know why it causes photosensitivity. Certainly, uh, reduction of the stratum corneum means that the UVB, right? So the UVB, UVA can actually go into the, um, into the skin causing photosensitivity. But we still don't know why as compared with uh, retinoids. The retinoids are well uh, understood how it causes photosensitivity. So that's another disadvantage for um, chemical exfoliators. So where should you start if you want to go for chemical exfoliation? So uh, as I said, if you have sensitive skin, remember, go slow. Slow in, fast out. That's what they say for car racing as well, slow in, fast out, yeah. <laughs> so if you go slow, what I mean, you might want to start maybe twice a week, even once a week. And you want to start with a low concentration. So just to give you an example, all the acids which we use, they have a low pH. The pH, generally speaking, is between two to four. The lower the pH, the higher the, higher the bioavailability, the higher the chance of um, irritation. So you might want to try something like, for example, a cream. Just I'll just put it out there, yeah? Uh, Neostrada AHA10. You can use many other examples from all the other skincare companies, but just to give you an example. So you take AHA10 in a lotion or cream base, you mix it with the equivalent base, so lotion for lotion, cream for cream, uh, and basically one pea size, one pea size. So essentially you've diluted down to a 5% concentration. Uh, you want to try to use that possibly two nights per week. If you can tolerate that, three nights a week. If you can tolerate that, keep going. Right at the end, you might want to use undiluted, right? So that way you're very slow with your, with your acids. Uh, that way you can manage any irritant reactions or allergic reactions or any untoward reactions. Yeah, So you want to go very slow because at the end of the day, you do not want skin irritation. You want your skin to feel um, uh, soft. You want your skin to feel nice. You want to have a nice glow, but you don't want to be red. You don't want to be blotchy. You don't want to be flaky. If you have any of those, you've gone too far. So what do you do then? Really easy. Get off all your actives for a couple of days. Yes, that includes sunscreen, maybe for two or three days because that can irritate your skin. And then start with a lower concentration, less frequently. So guys, um, you know, when we talk about, I guess, uh, exfoliation, it doesn't mean that these two are mutually exclusive. So, you, so for example, if you're using a retinoid retinol or uh, an acid, doesn't mean you can't use one of these. But once again, you've got to be, have the right skin type and you've got to approach things logically. So how do you make these work harder for you? Basically, you use this first and then this. So for example, if you understand your skin very well, you might understand that, hey, you know what? You're not getting irritation using a Clarisonic. You might want to use a Clarisonic. You want to use an equivalent brush or even a mitt and you want to um, exfoliate, right? So you might want to exfoliate uh, in the shower. And then after that, you might want to use your actives. So things like your retinol, your retinoids, or even your acids. So if you can graduate from using uh, either one independently and you can tolerate it, then that's when you actually start combining. That's where you have really good gains with your skin. So things like uh, patients, for example, with uh, blackheads or acne prone skin, you might want to use something like, um, like, like I said, a loofah and apricot scrub, do it gently. And then you might, you might want to use something like a 2% beta hydroxy acid. Yeah. Because in the context of, um, oily skin and acne prone skin, you want a beta hydroxy acid over an alpha hydroxy acid because it's more lipophilic. In other words, it goes into the oil gland a lot easier. 
um, and it's also anti-inflammatory. So it's pick your skincare acids based upon the skin condition that you have. Guys, I've, I've uh, listed quite a fair few different choices that you can have. Um, it's listed on my Instagram account, um, and by all means, check it out. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a quick, well, it's not, it's another 15 minutes. I keep, keep going on and on about exfoliation. It's one of those things which I think is underrated. Uh, and certainly you should try this uh, to make your skincare products work harder for you. So remember, it's not about using as much skincare products as you can. It's about using them uh, with precision and using it sensibly. Uh, guys, I've also included a uh, link to uh, Michelle Wong. So Michelle Wong is uh, Lab Muffin uh, Skincare. So she is unbelievable. She's got a huge amount of knowledge. Uh, I've taken a few hints from her from the exfoliation guide. It's a free guide. She's not going to sell you anything. You can just get it free, yeah? So this exfoliation guide's linked below. Uh, guys, by all means, please comment, share, uh, chime your thoughts, and make the channel grow. I'll see you same time, same place uh, next week, and we can discuss a, another common topic. Thanks for that, guys. Bye for now.